has arrived on track seven. Carriage numbering starts at the head of the train. Thank you. Have you ever dreamt of coming to Siberia, of making the greatest railway journey in the world, of having one of the best travel experiences ever in the land that hardly anybody knows about? I just made it. I made it dozens of times in my life because I'm from Siberia and it never ceases to amaze me. And I'm shooting this video for you right now in the Siberian wood. I thought it would be a proper place to make a video about Siberia. This land is among the most beautiful, diverse and interesting regions on Earth, but most people form a false impression of the place. And there is much more fiction than fact in that. That's why I'm going to share and debunk five myths about Siberia I'm getting the most from foreigners. In my previous video, you find out that Siberia has never been a united and independent country. It has been part of Russia for several centuries already, the Russian Tsar Dome, the Russian Empire, the Soviet Union, modern Russia to be precise. Does anybody live there at all? So you've already seen at least one person, me. Who else? <laughs> Myth number two. There is a desert in Siberia. Nobody lives here. I should not mix it up with the word a dessert. So Siberia is a dessert, like a strawberry cake. So does anybody live here? If they do, how do they live? And how different are those places from those you are familiar with? Let's talk about that today. And I'll bring you some numbers. As you know, I've worked in analytics and with information. So it's professional, it's professional habit to bring numbers. So there are over 37 million people here in Siberia. That's according to statistics in 2021. And this number has somehow decreased since then. I guess you understand why. So I spent one year in Asia recently and I've met quite many people from Siberia too, mostly young men who decided not to take part in any activities here. But this difference, this gap, it's not that big, it's not huge. So 37 million people, almost as many as, for example, in Poland, in Saudi Arabia or Malaysia. And you could say, okay, so we agree, 30 something million people, that's a lot. But the territory is just huge here. Siberia is huge, and I agree. And that's why the population density is low here. But you don't really feel it when you live in Siberia. You do feel it and you do see it. When, for example, you are making a trip on the Trans-Siberian Railway. I just made it, so check it out right now. You could see the same picture for many, many hours. Only nature, no people, no cities, no villages. Let me know below in the comments if you want to know more about that trip. I made it dozens of times in my life and I'm glad to share with you how you could arrange that on your own without any agencies and additional expenses. Anyway, I guess when you think of Siberia, many of you imagine Baikal Lake, some mountains and steppes. But in fact, a typical life here in Siberia is very different. By the way, I really like this very natural light now. I could not bring any lamps or anything of that kind. It doesn't make any sense in a Siberian wood. So Siberians, Siberians are much more city folk than you could imagine. Around 70% of them live in cities. There are three cities that have population over one million people. My home city is number four, almost, almost one million people. So you don't feel like an desert here at all. Just take a look at those crowds. I made this video several weeks ago when my home city celebrated its birthday. And because of that, there were many, many events and activities in the very center. Do you feel like an desert here? What's interesting, most cities are in the south of Siberia along the Trans-Siberian Railway. Just take a look at the map. That road was built over a century ago to connect the whole country, to connect Siberian part with the European part of Russia. The majority of people live here, and the main industry, economic and science hubs are here as well, in the south. How do the cities look like? Many foreigners ask me that. And as always, on my channel, I want to bring you some vivid examples something you could watch, analyze, and evaluate on your own. So let's just take a walk around in my big and typical Siberian home city. So here is an area where I'm living right now. I'm visiting my family, a townhouse area on the outskirts of the city. There are more typical apartment blocks here where many people live, where most people live, I would say. Here is how the center of the city looks like. 
plus some local peculiarities, like these beautiful wooden shutters and windows, or this huge, very old Orthodox church that looks like a citadel and reflects the history of the place. But in general, cities in Siberia are not different from those in the European part of Russia. If you haven't been to Russia yet, then, and you don't understand how those cities look like, then check out my video Three Reasons Why Now It's the Best Time to Travel to Russia. You'll find the link below in the description or somewhere here. So if you haven't been to Russia yet, I would say Siberian cities are not that different from European cities, for example. For sure, you don't get confused, you don't get lost when you come here. Now you know what Siberia is not, but we have three more myths to be debunked and explained. And we talked a lot about the famous Trans-Siberian railway trip today, so please leave below in the comments any questions you may have about that trip, and I could make a video about that too. Subscribe not to miss a video, stay tuned, and see you soon.